Welcome back, folks, to more Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire. No Poker Centers, no Pokemarts. In the last episode, we took down the majority of the Petalburg Gym here. Uh, minus the Gym Leader, who is quite a task in himself. And the reason we did that, uh, the reason we left off him, at least till this next part, is mostly because the episode was running a little bit long, but also because uh, Disco here, the Sableye, needs to get to level 25 before we can actually fight the leader. Uh, because he needs to learn a specific move, that move being Detect. Uh, obviously, that's not the only way of defeating the Gym Leader. We do have Dig with Marsh Tom, which... Marsh, uh, or with Marsh Tomp. And, uh... He could realistically take down, uh, Slackings as well. Because of his, uh, invulnerable turn, whatever. But, I believe Sableye is probably the safest method. And I don't want to have to waste Dig PP and have, uh... Norman or whatever his name is, heal up his Pokemon and crap like that. So that's what we're going to go with. Uh, we're going to stick with this method, uh, the one that I've decided to use. And uh, in order to do that, I think the best bet is to get Sableye up one more level. And I think we may as well just throw a rare, rare candy on him. Um, it's probably not the best use of, a, use of a rare candy, especially considering the run that we're attempting here. But... Um, Simply for the fact that, for those of you who don't realize, uh, we are not allowed to uh, use the PC or any sort of other heal. It's more than just no Poké Centers, no Pokémarts. It's in as, as in addition to that, you cannot use your mom. You cannot use the PC to heal. All these additional rules. So for those of you who are still just jumping in, maybe this is their first part watching. Um, Go back to part one, where uh, in the dis video description I go over all the rules and whatever. But, um, essentially, for this, uh, Rare Candy functions as a revive for us, and that's also very important. So if you look at our inventory here, um, you can see we've got three Rare Candies and three revives. So overall, six total uh, restorations for anything that faints in our party. Other than that, we're kind of screwed, but... Uh, I think Sableye can kill some decent stuff in this cave. Um, for an okay amount of EXP gain. And so if I can get him to level 24, I may as well just throw on a rare candy. Uh, the other thing is he's going to be learning two new moves. And Astonish currently has zero PP, and uh, Nightshade still has a de decent amount of PP. So for now, uh, Sableye is just gonna sit here. Actually, I got an idea. We're gonna take the EXP share. We're gonna give it to Breloom. And that way they can gain, they can both gain from this, uh, this battle here. So replace that, there we go. And hopefully we can, this doesn't take too long. I imagine this to be a shorter part just on the basis of what we're going to be doing. But, um, it all depends on the, how, what kind of Pokemon we get in these fights here. I'm looking for specifically Abra here that only appear level 8. And uh, the way the game works out is, as long as they're, this Abra's IVs are below uh, 24 HP IVs, um, Sableye can one-hit KO it, uh, guaranteed. Especially with Nightshade, because Nightshade has a set 23 damage. Obviously that Abra would fall in that, fell in that category, we get 41 EXP. And uh, just checking the math here. Uh, Sableye needs 400 or 328 EXP to get to level 24, so that means I need to fight eight more Abras. No, 41 yet. Yeah. Eight more Abras, and we've got 11 Nightshades. So as long as, as long as we get eight Abras out of 11 uh, to have 24 HP EVs or less or IVs. Uh, then we should be good, and Sableye will look at his level up, and Breloom will get the maximum number of additional EXP from these fights. Obviously it's going to be negligible for Breloom, but uh, anything that helps, because ultimately I'm going to be getting rid of Nightshade anyways. And so if I can maximize the usage of Nightshade uh, by killing stuff and helping out Breloom in that just little bit there, um, that's going to go a decent way for helping the rest of our party. Uh, for the most part, I don't see Sableye being used much beyond this point, so tossing on that rare candy doesn't really hurt him, um, even though it limits the effectiveness of the rest of our party. Just for the fact that a free level up now is kind of 
uh, not as beneficial as it would be with a free level up later, uh, obviously because uh, it's harder to get those higher levels anyway as the game progresses. But um, it's all re in relative terms. As you fight higher level Pokemon, you get more experience. So arguably, it's not as much of a waste as it may seem at this point. But uh, hopefully we can actually hit some Abras. That'd be really nice. Um, I guess we can talk about sports in the news. Uh, those of you Leaf fans out there, we're in fifth place, doing pretty good. Um, hopefully we can keep that up, you know, through two months of hockey, Leafs playing well, it's kind of a miracle in some cases, but uh, it's a short season, so maybe the Leafs can somehow make the playoffs, and for the first time in the past, and who knows, number of years, it's been a while since we've actually, seen, actually witnessed some uh, Leafs playoff hockey, but uh, yeah, well I just hunt for these Abras, um, I think I'm just going to use the speed up button to save you guys the added stress. Um, Obviously, I've been refraining from the speed up button for the most part, so this is going to be one instance where I actually use it. So we're just going to jump into this. Hopefully, we can find Abras without too much time wasted. Uh, I guess the other thing that uh, happened in the news recently in sports was uh, Joe Flacco getting that $120 million contract, you know. Because he's the best quarterback in the league, right? All you Ravens fans. I'm sure you appreciated that, or at least, I don't know. And I just don't think any player is worth that kind of money um, in any sport really like if if that's gonna handicap the rest of your team as far as cap space is concerned you really shouldn't go for that kind of deal um, it seems very selfish on his behalf I don't know that's just my take on things there and uh, it certainly doesn't help the rest of his team so we'll see how that plays out uh, coming into the next year and the years to come how much the Ravens are actually limited by that contract but um, nevertheless very interesting past few days in sports uh, a lot of free agencies going on in our free agents are about to hit uh, March 12th I think in the NFL so definitely be interested in following all that stuff hopefully the Patriots can pick up some nice players maybe a nice white out or white out or something who knows but uh, yeah leave a comment about something sports related if you want uh, or if you don't watch sports then I don't know leave a comment about the weather I, I'm just like running out of ideas to talk about for this down period here um, obviously there's gonna be some we, well you've already seen some of the slower parts of this run where we were grinding about grinding up geodudes and crap like that but uh, nevertheless we seem to be getting pretty lucky with these abras uh, apparently they don't want to have good HP IVs, so that seems okay for us. And, uh, what else was I gonna say? Yeah, um, the, I guess the upside to this video is even though this is a grinding session, we do ultimate, we will ultimately hit the gym leader. So there is something to look forward to at the end of this video. It's not completely a waste of time for you guys to watch, uh, as Sableye just kind of messes around and kills Abras, which. I think it's pretty consistent with what he does. He is a dark type after all, and uh, I think all these Abras have is HP fighting anyways, so seems okay. Um, the reason I'm not killing uh, Makuhita though, and I guess this is an interesting point to bring up, is the fact that Makuhita is going to take two hits to kill with Nightshade, and therefore, as a result of using two Nightshades, uh, it's one less Abra that I could kill, and ultimately, um, even though killing Makuhita yields, I think, 136 experience, depending on his level, of course, um, the fact that you're hitting with two Nightshades means that you have to divide it by two, and ultimately you get like 70-something, whereas these Abras are giving me like 82. Uh, obviously, there may be another better Pokemon out there, but this was the closest spot I could find with a decent... EXP yield. So, um, this is what I went with. Obviously, uh, I don't really care too much about wasting Nightshades. They're, like I said, I'm going to replace them with both, uh, both Nightshade and Astonish are going to be replaced very shortly. So, it's kind of negligible and not as necessary. Um, 
to keep them for later, so. We also have the move tutor if I do ever want to throw the nightshade back on, so really it's it's neither here nor there. Um, come on, Sableye. There we go. So, four more nightshades. Uh, this one should get us our level up if my math was correct. And yes, we do get to level 24, so there we go. And I'm not going to throw on the rare candy just yet because we do still have a couple nightshades. I may as well use them. Obviously, it's better to use the rare candy from right after you level, or right after you level up. But I'm not too concerned about that. Um, at this point, I'd rather just share the experience with Breloom. Um, he's still gonna Breloom's still gonna get 40 something experience out of it. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, with the 80 experience, uh, that was because it was the, the reason Sableye is getting 41 is because it's divided by two between Breloom, of course. Um, yeah, we're still messing around, trying to wait for Abras, and I believe I just need two more. Yeah, two more. So, uh, shouldn't take too long. They are they are a 10% chance, but um, with the speed up button, it kind of quells that a little bit. It makes it a little more decent. And there's one. And one more. Come on. Oh, sweet. Right away. Awesome. And it looks like all of the Abras we fought, uh, pending this one... Yes. All of them had an HP IV lower than 24, so that means they all had exactly 23 HP, or less, uh, depending on their IV stat. And Sableye can uh, basically ensure a 1-hit KO on all of them. So, that was really sweet. Uh, we got the m most benefit out of all of that. And let me see here. We want to give the Miracle Seed back to Breloom. Or... Maybe not. No. I don't want to give the Miracle Seed to him. I want to... Teach moves. Teach moves. That's what we want to do. Alright. So we're going to teach Toxic to Sableye. Uh, remove, remove. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. What do I want to get rid of? We're going to get rid of Astonish. So, um... Toxic is going to become very important, as you will see in the upcoming gym battle, very shortly. Um, it's immensely useful. And the next thing we want to do... Where are you? Rare candy, let's go. Sableye gets level 25. Alright, he wants to learn detect, and the reason detect is very useful is because it can uh, stall out the one turn that uh, the gym leader slacking is allowed to attack. Therefore, um, all that Slacking gets to do is nothing on his wasted turn. Because of uh, how Truant works, you only move every other move. And so Detect allows us to completely work around that nonsense, and Toxic allows us to stall it out. And all in all, Sableye is just the perfect counter to Norman, uh, especially his two Slackings. Um, I will bring up an interesting mechanic as far as Slacking is concerned in this generation, and that's mostly due to the fact of the way his ability works if you have two slackings in your party. And uh, I'll bring that up when we come to it in the gym battle. But for now, I believe we're good to go and we can finally go take on Norman. Hopefully, um, he doesn't give us too much trouble because he is still pretty strong. Um, and if I do screw up in, figure, in remembering what we're supposed to do, which shouldn't be too hard, um, he can pose a bit of a threat, but for now, I think we can manage with our team in its current state. So, uh, I think let's just jump right into it. Uh, Sableye, you're going to wreck up shop. So, um, the clearest path to this uh, to Norman is just straight down this way. We've already defeated all these trainers, so we can simply just walk past all of these rooms. And uh, I think there's only one one trainer in this entire gym that I actually avoided, and that was the healing or recovery trainer, I believe, uh, who spams super potions and annoying crap. So that's the reason we dodged him. Um, let's just see where Breloom's at. Okay, 9.33. I don't think he's going to get a level up where he needs it, because I'd like for him to be at level 27 for this fight. Uh, just for that little bit of extra stat gain, uh, you'll see where that may come into play. But um, I think Sableye's good to go, and hopefully we can 
beat this guy. Uh, the fifth gym leader, as I've mentioned before, is basically very important to all of these runs. It seems that once you defeat the fifth gym leader, a lot of the game starts to plateau, and you can really start to pick up the pace as far as gathering items is concerned. And uh, the reason we taught uh, Sableye Fake Out here, since I'll just get back into the battle here, is the fact that Fake Out is going to remove um, Slacking's first turn. It's an automatic guaranteed flinch, and so Slacking can't do anything his first turn, and that counts as his move. So therefore he's going to slack off this turn, and we're free to toss a Toxic on him. Hopefully it hits, which it does, so that's nice. And as you see there, Slacking loafed around. So that's going to give us a free turn here. Or we just got our free turns to with our Toxic. So that gives us a free turn to set up a Detect, which is going to dodge anything this uh, Slacking wants to do. He wants to go for Encore, that's fine. Uh, Would have been nice to Encore us into Toxic, but that's not the case. Uh, now we have a free turn as well, so we're going to go for a Cut to get some damage on there. And he loafs around, that's fine. Uh, obviously cut is negligible damage, but it still helps finish off slacking nonetheless. So we're going to go for another detect on his in on his uh, actual attacking turn. He wants to use Yawn, that's perfectly fine. We're just going to dodge that. And based on where slacking is now, I believe we can actually finish off this turn. So uh, between Toxic and Cut, Toxic is actually going to finish uh, slacking off. Now remember that on that turn, slacking loafed around. That's very important. Um, the reason that mechanic is important is the fact that the next slacking that Norman sends out uh, is going to be have an attacking turn. So remember that, keep that in the back of your mind, and just follow me with that logic. Uh, simply for the fact that the way... Um, the way the mechanic works for Truron is that when the sla first slacking come, whatever the last slacking had, whether it was be whether it was an attacking turn or a slacking turn, or sorry, a resting turn, I don't know, just a a Truon turn. Whatever the next slacking comes in is going to have the opposite um, opposite turn. So if the first slacking attacked before it died, the next slacking that comes in is automatically going to have a Truon turn. So it's a very interesting mechanic, and hopefully uh, we can get a decent side of the coin on this. So we're going to Mach Punch Vigoroth, and... Oh, a crit. That... Uh, it's not as good as it seems. We do dodge a Slash here. Uh, he's obviously going to waste a Hyper Potion. I don't think I would have... I preferred him not to get the crit there. And I don't know if we're actually going to 2-KO this thing like I'd hoped. Uh, let's see what this Mach Quench does. Yeah, it's not going to be quite a 2-hit KO. Um, let's see, if I seed up this turn, he's going to hit me, and I may die. But if I Mach Punch, he may use... no. I don't think he's going to use a second Hyper Potion, so I'm going to go for a Mach Punch... Obviously that one didn't crit, so that's whatever. Hopefully this doesn't crit, and we do survive, that's nice. And I don't think he will use a second... Um... Really? Are you freaking serious? That... <sighs> that really takes me off. They hardly ever use a second healing item on their Pokemon. I really should have gone for the Leech Seed there. That's really stupid. Alright. Um, okay. I got an idea. I'm going to go to Sableye. Hopefully dodge a normal type attack. Yes. Okay. That works. I've got a plan. I've got a plan. We're going to fake out, boom, and that'll bring him to over 50%. And now we're going to go to Spinda. Luckily we had some spare fodder lying around, that's nice. And Encore, that's perfectly fine. Um, 
He might actually just go for a normal type move. I'm just gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it. Hopefully he just goes for like a slash or a facade or something. And yes he does. So that's gonna give me an extra turn to try and get some damage to make sure Mock Punch is gonna KO. And it looks from there Mock Punch should be a guaranteed KO. So we're gonna go to Spinda. We're gonna try and fodder it again. And he wastes an encore. That's awesome. Alright, uh at this point, Spinda is gonna be fodder. So, uh, it doesn't really matter what we go for, let's just go for tackle, whatever. Slash is gonna take us out, and <laughs> crit. Totally mattered, totally mattered, I was definitely gonna live that. Just gonna point that out there. Um, but yeah, at this point, Mock Punch should be able to take Vigoroth out, and I don't need to revive Breloom, so that definitely worked out for us a lot better. Um, obviously I'm getting pretty low on Mock Punches there, which is unfortunate. But, um, we always have ethers and we always have the move relearner, so Mock Punch will definitely be making its return. So, Slacking is coming back in though, and as we mentioned before, the first turn Slacking is going to have is an attacking turn, because the last Slacking had a Truant turn, the turn that we tried to use cut on him to help finish him off. So, we're going to fake out his uh, attacking turn, so he's going to flinch. And I'm going to Toxic on this turn as he loafs around. So there you go, there's the mechanic at work. So this Toxic goes on. Uh, I think at this point, because uh, Norman used two Hyper Potions on... What's his face? Uh, Vigoroth. He no longer has any for this stacking, which means we're going to be able to stall out this Toxic very quickly. So there goes his attacking turn because of a detect. Uh, we can now cut on this turn. And it seems that Norman is going to give us very little trouble. Uh, the only thing we're going to have to do is probably heal up Breloom. Um, this is a detect turn. And even though detect only has 5 PP, it's perfectly enough to deal with the slacking. Uh, Toxic will last just long enough to take the slacking out before uh, the de detect PP actually becomes an issue. And I believe we may be able to take him out here, uh, depending on how Toxic goes. And we do. So there we go. Fifth badge acquired. We did a fantastic job uh, working around Norman here. Obviously, we had to play around a bit and sacrifice our fodder in Spinda. But Spinda was there for a reason. And even though um, he was just kind of a fluke as to why we actually picked him up, he did serve a purpose, so um, more than just giving us strength and giving us access to Toxic, Spinda actually <laughs> served a purpose, so I'm definitely surprised about that. Didn't really expect it, but uh, definitely enjoy our... I certainly appreciate the way that it turned out. Uh, in addition to getting our gym badge, we actually receive Facade, and uh, not only that, but uh, Wally's parents want us to go see them, blah 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 blah. Uh, the reason Wally's parents want us to go see them is because they're going to give us access to an amazing move, an amazing water type stab move that Marsh Tomp is certainly going to appreciate in the move Surf. So thank thankfully after defeating the 5th gym badge, we're rewarded with Surf. So we're just going to head up to Wally's house here, talk to his dad, uh, blah 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 blah, we owe a lot to you, thank you mate, blah blah blah. Blah, 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 come on, give me it, there we go, surf, boom, ha, ha, thank you, and uh, thanks to surf, we now have access to a bunch of different areas in this game, um, those of you who are, from, who are familiar with Hoenn, those of you who aren't, water is so abundant in this generation, and uh, surf gives you access to so many different areas, the first being down here, which we do want to access, um, I'm just going to take a look at something for a second here. Breloom is at 8 HP, so I think I'm going to uh, give him a potion of some sort. Uh, the other thing I wanted to check was Marsh Top. Oh. You've got 8 water guns, so I'm going to have to try and make use of those. Or No, wait. What am I doing? Marsh Top, what are you at? Um, I've got two mud slaps. All right, um, I guess we'll have to, uh, no, no, I got an idea, ha, ha, what am I thinking? <laughs> Freak. 
This part's so stupid, I'm just wasting much time. Even though Zigzagoon cannot use strength, he can learn Surf, so HA! Take that. Uh, I was originally just gonna go waste those mud slaps on something and teach Marshtomp Surf in the next part, but for now we're gonna teach Zigzagoon Surf. Eventually I'll give it to Marshtomp as well when he runs out of moves uh, for one of his moves, but Zigzagoon gives us access to this area down here. Free rare candy, so that totally makes up for the fact that we just used one on Sableye. And uh, I'm just going to spend these last few minutes here picking up some extra items lying around. So here's another one. An ether, rare candy, ether, boom. Already two amazing items right off the bat. So as I can, as I said, uh, the fifth badge acts, gives us access to so many different places and so many different items. It's just a wonderful thing. And uh, now that we do have the fifth badge, the run is definitely going to start to pick up its pace. Um, we certainly want that max revive though. And uh, let's see what we can do about that. Um, he still had the XP share. What else do we have? Oh, I can give Sableye something. Um, let's give Sableye the Soothe Bell for now. All right. And a free max revive. So there's three amazing items right off the bat, uh, right after getting Surf. So. Not only is Surf a really powerful water type stab move for Marsh Tomp, as I mentioned, it's also giving us access to a number of different things. So, um, I guess we're going to leave things off for the next part to where we can explore further with our newly acquired HM. And hopefully, uh, now that the run is going to pick up a little bit more pace, we can start rolling along rather than having grind sessions against stupid Abras and Geodudes. Either way, uh, we definitely dealt with Norman very well in this part, and I'm fairly appreciative of the fact that Spinda pulled its weight. Uh, go go Fred, you really randomly produced uh, some stuff for us. So anyways guys, it's been great and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.